good to see you. Well, the what has happened? I mean, since Sir is here, so I'll go back to Sir your generation. Uh, to an extent, mine as well. What there has been a great change which has happened last uh, uh, twenty odd years. When we were growing up, Sir, when you your generation was growing up. There were a lot of theories you'd get to hear, conspiracy theories, so to speak. Said this happened, that happened. There were different claims, you know. They were made about what really happened to Bajpur. Uh, I would say that what has happened in the last couple of years, uh, especially after '97, a lot of documents were declassified in India, in America, Australia, and other countries. So, what was in the midst of, uh, you know, unknown or probably in the realm of conspiracy theories? Today we have uh, attained a lot of clarity, so much so, so much so that you can actually pin down to the three possibilities. Many theories were spun, you know, in the older days, for example, somebody came up with a view, I don't know how, an American journalist of uh, Pulitzer Award-winning journalist came up with the theory Subhash was captured and killed by Americans. There's nothing, you know, even remotely to suggest that could be possibly true. So this is, uh, so what has happened, the, the fog has become much more clear in the last couple of years, the information which was in the realm of conspiracy. In fact, I would say, well, if some of the people who are now dead, if they were alive today, they would be in legal trouble. Because they lied through their teeth. Now we have documents, information to show they were lying, uh, we were being misled. It's a legal uh, technicality that we cannot go against them because they are no longer alive. People in our government, people in the level of PM. So this is how the whole change is, because often I, I hear in, in Calcutta when I come to People keep going back to the older days. Oh yeah, I read a book in 70s. I'm sorry, 70s a long time ago. I mean, we used to have Walkman. I mean, now this is the age of uh, what I hype had whatever. So what happened in those is a long gone story. So there's a lot of data which has become available. So much so that we can pinpoint these are the three possibilities as you would, you know, put a question in, in, in when you go to exam something. What is which is the capital of India? So Delhi, Calcutta, Bombay. You have to pick one. So there's no fourth option on the table. Now, Sandhu was telling you about the evidence part, ki whatever we are going to show and talk about will be, you know, mostly for more parts will be legally tenable. <coughs> we are not here to give you our theories. These are not theories. These are some, you know, matters of record and some of which have been uh, taken to courts of law or, or they are coming out from government records which cannot be contested. Or if at all, there is something like a testimony. For instance, uh, Gandhiji made public statements that Subhash was alive. That is months after he, you know, Subhash was died. So you will find it in Hindustan Times, you will find it in New York Times in those days. So even though if you ask me, is it legally admissible? No, it's not because Gandhiji never made this statement before a court of law. So even though this is not legally admissible, this information is legally, in, I mean, it's, it's believable in the general sense of the term. Why would somebody, the level of Mahatma Gandhi would tell a lie publicly? So, so we would stick out to, you know, to whatever whatever we tell you about this in that case, either to the evidence part, which is legally tenable, and if it is not legally tenable, we will go by something which you cannot contest. And all the images and documents we are going to, you know, show, and we have just shown, they are all standard, uh, you know, newspaper articles, nothing from tabloids, so they would be common documents, uh, videos, etc. But this is, for instance, this is in Hindu Sun Times, I 